Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jia Cheng Su and I am a software engineer at Kubernetes. Today I'll be talking about an open source project called KubeCarrier and how you can manage thousands of Kubernetes applications by using KubeCarrier. Uh, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm a software engineer at Kubernetes, mostly focusing on service and application management on a Kubernetes Kubernetes platform, and I'm one of the core maintainers of KubeCarrier project. Uh, before we dive into KubeCarrier, let's talk about Kubernetes operators. Operators are uh, software extensions of Kubernetes, uh, which make use of customer resources to manage uh, application lifecycle, including uh, deployment, upgrades, and backups. Uh, operators are working nicely in single cluster scenario, However, in the multi-cluster scenario, imagine you have hundreds of clusters or thousands of clusters. Managing application resources in every single cluster can be complicated and the process need to be automated. Relying on a single um, operator does not scale very well in those uh, complicated scenarios. That's why we built Cube Carrier an open source platform for managing applications and services across multiple Kubernetes clusters. And uh, it is built in a generic way to work with any um, Kubernetes operators. Also, it provides a centralized uh, service hub to expose your services and applications to users. Uh, here is a high level overview of uh, Kube Carrier. So in KubeCarrier, we have a management cluster, which has a KubeCarrier installed and running. A service provider can register um, service clusters to KubeCarrier, and for each service cluster, they will deploy the application operator. Uh, once the service user come to KubeCarrier, the service user will only interact with the management cluster and provide instructions to select uh, and manage services. And the, the real service instances and the application workloads will be uh, deployed on service cluster by the application operators. Then uh, let's talk about Kube Carrier in more details. So as I mentioned in previous slides, uh, there are two different types of uh, clusters in KubeCarrier. One is a management cluster, we call it a service hub. Uh, another one type is service cluster, which will be uh, registered by service providers and uh, run application workloads and service instances. Uh, also, as I mentioned, KubeCarrier works with the uh, Kubernetes operators, which means the application operators will be running the uh, service clusters and the Kube Carrier has a discover mechanism to discover CRDs of those operators and make them available for user in the centralized uh, service hub. Uh, then Kube Carrier also propagates the customer resources from uh, the centralized service hub to service clusters to drive the operators to uh, create uh, application workloads and the service instances. Also, Kube Carrier has multi-tenancy support, uh, which means for Kube Carrier installation, uh, it supports multiple service providers and multiple service consumers. Uh, this picture shows uh, uh, an overview of a multi-tenancy in Kube Carrier. So in Kube Carrier, there are three personas. Uh, one is a pro platform operator, which will operate the uh, entire management cluster and the manages KubeCarrier installation and uh, KubeCarrier accounts. And another one is a, a service provider, which will manage service clusters, for example, register them to a Kube, KubeCarrier management cluster. And also a service provider will manage uh, operators and the service instances which are running in the service cluster. Then we have a service consumer who will interact uh, with the uh, Kube, uh, Kube Carrier Management cluster. Uh, 
and the requests and manage the services. And uh, for each uh, account in Cube Carrier, uh, it, uh, it has a dedicated namespace to isolate the resources from each other. And the Cube Carrier will create RBAC permissions automatically for each account to achieve multi tenants. So, um, so those are basic uh, concepts and uh, the high level overview of Cube Carrier uh, architecture. Now let's move to the demo session. In the demo, I will show you how to um, manage a radius database as a service across multiple clusters by using Cube Carrier. So uh, firstly, let me uh, present today's demo setup. I'm using Kubernetes, Kubernetes platform to create clusters in different providers. As I mentioned in previous slides, Kube Carrier work with any Kubernetes operators, any Kubernetes distributions. So in today's demo, we have four clusters across, different, across four providers. And we have a management cluster, which will have which will have a Kube Carrier uh, up and running, and we will have another three service clusters, which will be uh, running the real radius database instances. Okay, let me share my uh, terminal with you. So, so as we mentioned, we have four clusters, and you can see uh, this is the management cluster, and the. Uh, the rest of the clusters are for the service cluster one, two, three. And uh, uh, the first thing I would like to show you is about the account that we mentioned uh, in Cube Carrier. So here is an example of an account. Uh, you can see this account is for the service provider. And if you look at the, the role, roles uh, field, and uh, this indicates the rule of this account in Kube, Kube Carrier. For example, it can be provider, which means this is a service provider. And it can also be tenant, which means it's a, um, a service consumer. Also, it can be a provider and the tenant at the same time, which means uh, you can provide uh, your services to other uh, users. At, and uh, at the same time, you can also consume services from other providers. And also there is a subject field in the account definition. This is a similar to the a subject in uh, the cluster row binding and row binding of Kubernetes object. And uh, uh, Kube Carrier will create uh, RBAC rules and row bindings for the users here to make sure that those users can have access to this account. So this is, as I mentioned, this is an example of the provider. And uh, let me show you uh, some examples of the tenant. So here are examples of tenants account, and you can see the rule is tenant. And currently in our system, we have already four uh, accounts created. Let me uh, go through them one by one with you. So the first one is a radius provider, which will be providing radius database services in our demo. And there's another three uh, accounts are tenants. Uh, they will be consuming the radius uh, services from the provider. Okay, so, and the next thing I would like to show you is about the service cluster. As you can see, we have, uh, currently we have uh, three uh, service clusters and uh, uh, there are two of them uh, which are already uh, registered to uh, Kube Carrier. You can see the, the service cluster one and two are already registered in Kube Carrier and uh, we will use the service cluster three later in the demo. And you can also see the status or ready and also the Kubernetes version of those uh, uh, service clusters. So, so now we have registered the service cluster to, to Kube Carrier and uh, we have already deployed the radius operator on each of them. The next thing is to 
um, led Cube Carrier to discover the uh, CRDs of radius operator in the service cluster. How can we do that? Uh, we can do that by uh, creating a catalog entry set. So here is an example of catalog entry set. And uh, if you look into the uh, discover configuration and uh, there is a CRD field, which you can specify the CRD name that you would like to uh, let uh, Cube Carrier to discover from the service cluster. In my case, it's a radius a CRD. And also in the expose config, you can specify which fields of the CRD you would like to expose to user. So in this case, we specify some of the fields and we want to expose them to the end user. And also we point to, to the CRD in the catalog entry set. So the catalog entry set will propagate the CRD with this name from service cluster to our management cluster. Okay, let's try to uh, create this in our uh, um, management cluster as a member of a uh, provider member. Okay, uh, after this catalog entry set is created, next step uh, would be uh, create a catalog. So here is an example of uh, the catalog. Uh, so for the catalog, there are two uh, selectors in the spec. One is for selecting tenants. Uh, in this case, uh, we select the tenant by using uh, label selectors. For example, the tenants with the label service with value radius will be selected. Uh, I have already pre-configured our tenant A and tenant B by adding this label. So only tenant A and tenant B will see the services from the, this catalog. And uh, also there is a selector for a catalog entry. And uh, uh, in this case, for a simple uh, demonstration, we will select all the catalog entries. Okay, so uh, it's time to create the catalog. Here. And after the catalog uh, is created, we can wait until Cube Carrier to uh, discover the CRDs from uh, service clusters and uh, make them available for the users. So for checking if uh, the service are available for users, we can check the offerings object from the tenant's perspective. So you can see there are two uh, offerings object that are available for the user. And uh, those offerings are explained by the names. For example, for the first one, it's a radius service from service cluster one from a provider radius provider. Same thing for the second one, but the second one is from the service cluster two, but also provided by the radius provider. Okay, so uh, as I already mentioned, we only uh, expose the service to tenant A and the tenant B, but uh, not tenant C. We can verify that uh, by checking the offerings object in every tenant namespace. So you can see for tenant A and tenant B, they have two available offerings, but uh, for tenant C, there is no offerings in, in tenant C. This is because our catalog uh, object that we created before uh, doesn't select uh, tenant C. So tenant C cannot see the uh, radius uh, services. Okay, so it's time to create a service for uh, the tenant, uh, for the radius uh, service. So, uh, here is an example of the radius service that we can create uh, for tenant A and tenant B. So it's like a customer resource called uh, radius. And here we specify some fields that are exposed to user. Uh, 
And then we can just create the radius uh, customer resource as a member of tenant A. And the, you can see the real workload is actually created in the uh, service cluster, not in the management cluster. And uh, we can we can do the uh, we can create another uh, we can create another service for the tenant A, but in service cluster too. You can see there is another uh, radius instance, which is created for tenant A in service cluster too. Uh, and uh, another thing I would like to mention is that uh, all the uh, service instances in the service cluster will be isolated for, for uh, every tenant. For example, if I create uh, another um, instance for tenant B uh, in service cluster two, and you can see there is another um, radius instance is created only for time B. And uh, this is in different namespace with the one that created for tenant A. So the workload are completely uh, isolated on a uh, service cluster. Okay, now let's make use of the service cluster three. So uh, what I would like to show you is about uh, how to uh, register the the service cluster to Cube Carrier and Cube Carrier will automatically discover the uh, CRDs and, and the services from the new joined, new joined uh, service cluster. So uh, let me show you an example of service cluster object. Uh, so in the service cluster object, there is a Cube Config secret, which is pointing to the Cube Config of this uh, uh, service cluster. And we can create uh, this service cluster by applying this uh, file. And after that, we can check uh, the service clusters in the management uh, cluster and wait until the service cluster is ready. Okay, so now the new service cluster is ready, which is a uh, service cluster three. And uh, uh, since for the service cluster three, we have already deployed the radius operator. So our, um, our, cat, our catalog will automatically discover the radius service from uh, service three and make it available for both tenant A and tenant B. Let's try to get the offering object for uh, tenant A. And you can see there is a new created um, offer offering, uh, which is a radius from a service cluster three uh, from a, a provider radius provider. And, uh, and the, uh, then you can just use this uh, service and uh, use this uh, service offerings and uh, create uh, the uh, in radius instance in uh, service cluster three. So you can see the uh, radius instance is created in service cluster three for uh, tenant A. So uh, it is quite uh, easy in Kube Carrier to register a uh, service cluster and make the services available to the end user by the uh, Kube Carrier service hub. Okay, this is uh, all this is all about uh, today's demo.
if you have any questions, you can send me a, an email or you can create issues on our project page on GitHub. Or if you are interested in more advanced topics about Cube Carrier, you can check out our documentation. Thanks for your joining and uh, attention.